Hi, I've heard about the new feature of X1149 Boundary Scan Analyzer. What exactly is this feature? Can you share more about it? Sure, the new feature is known as the IEEE 1687 support. Let me tell you more about it. However, before we dive into the concepts of what IEEE 1687 is all about, let me share with you the context of how Boundary Scan came about and why we should all appreciate this feature. Since the late 1970s, in-circuit test has been the prime technology to conduct structural tests. However, with the rise of product miniaturization and increasing complexity of PCBAs, the technology to conduct structural tests has evolved from conducting in-circuit test to boundary scan. Now, imagine having a printed circuit board with three chips on it. Allow me to make this visualization simple to comprehend. Imagine that each chip is like a house, a house with one resident and one distinct address. Now, to deliver the mill to the right address, we need a postman to match the mill to the house address. For example, a letter to the address CPU will go to hashtag CPU. Just like how a master and slave control system works, the master control unit portrayed by the postman will control the order execution by sending out mills to the respective chips in the whole system. It fetches and decodes program instruction just like how the postman collects and sends out mills to the chips on the PCB. In the case when the postman does not see anyone at home, it will send the mill to the neighbor and request them to help pass the mill to the desired recipient. This showcases the interconnects between chips and illustrates how the chips on the printed circuit board act as a master-slave control system. Boundary Scan has enabled the capability to interact with IEEE 1149.1 compliant devices which has helped to perform structural tests effectively on PCBAs. However, the issue arises when the chips become a soft intellectual property IP, such as the functionality of CPU, memory and graphic processor as a software code. In this case, the intellectual property is like a resident sharing a common house with other residents instead of having a house of its own. This is also known as system on chip. We now have a new challenge in accessing the intellectual properties on the chip. In the case of this illustration, the only access point to the boundary scan analyzer is the tap controller. As shown in this simple illustration, the boundary scan analyzer only has the address to the house but do not have the names of the recipient. Similarly, even though the scan analyzer has access to the tab controller, it does not have access to the individual intellectual properties inside it. Another challenge faced by the tab controller is that it is unable to understand what the various IPs are saying. Based on this illustration, the IPs and the tap controller do not speak a common language. Hence, it is also hard for the tap controller to pass the mail to the individual IP. <laughs> The main issue from this illustration is how can the boundary scan analyzer pass the mill to the right IP. Similarly, from the perspective of the boundary scan analyzer, the main issue is how the IPs can be accessed in a system on chip. In a nutshell, with increasing complexities in packaging of silicon chips into multi-level IP modules, structural testing is becoming more complex. When each IP used to be a separate chip in the past, it would ensure accessibility for testing the various interconnects on the PCBA. But with the IPs bundling into the same IC package, it is like multiple cheats being dissolved into a single package with limited to no access to these functional blocks. Structural testability of these blocks would obviously pose limitations. Hence, the main problem lies in the increasing complexities of the packaging of silicon chips into multiple intellectual property modules. As such, to mitigate this problem, we have a new standard known as the IEEE 1687. This standard has been built on the existing boundary scan standard. 
Boundary scan enables testing interconnects on printed circuit board. On the other hand, IEEE 1687 enables testing interconnects between IP blocks of a silicon chip. By standardizing the built-in self-test implementation in the IPs, the IEEE 1687 will act as a medium to allow easier test generation and standardized execution and diagnostics. With the common language set between the IPs and TAP controller, this will ensure effective communication between the boundary scan analyzer, the TAP controller, and the various IPs on the chip. By integrating both IEEE 1149.x and IEEE 1687 into the boundary scan analyzer, it can allow both external and internal access. The IEEE 1149.x will test for the board interconnects on the PCBA, whereas the IEEE 1687 ensures a form of standardization between IP blocks of a silicon chip. This also ensures the capability to test internal IPs within the board application environment as compared to the cheap test environment. All in all, the IEEE 1687 standard defines access mechanism for on-chip embedded instrumentation. IEEE 1687 files include the Instrument Connection Language ICL, and Procedural Description Language PDL. To simplify this concept, IEEE 1687 is a form of access for the boundary scan analyzer to standardize the language to English. The files ICL and PDL will represent both grammar and vocabulary that are required for the chips to communicate effectively with the TAP controller. As part of these language, we have the Instrument Connectivity Language file which is the ICL. This describes the structure of the embedded instrument access network that connects instruments to the chip's TAP interface. On the other hand, we have the Procedural Description Language file which is the PDL. This describes the test procedures for testing an instrument once it has been isolated. With the advancement that we see on semiconductor, we can summarize that MCMs are getting more common today. High bandwidth memories 3D packaged with memories and semiconductor IP blocks from various vendors in a single package is becoming more common. EDA2 translates the IP level ICL and PDL into test patterns at the cheap level. ICL and PDL will then go through a wafer test for semiconductor IP company to conduct IP's testing. Semicon OEM integrates multiple IPs into an SOC package. In order to ensure that the components making the SOC is working well, the SOC OEM will leverage the ICL and PDLs of the respective IPs to test. All the ICLs and PDLs are bundled and run together in a sequence to ensure that there are no defects on the SOC. The SOC is then assembled onto the board. Here, ICL, PDL along with the BSDL and board netlist are used to create 1687 board test. While running the boundary scan test on the board, we run 1687 test as well as devices that support 1687. If there are any defects in the IP blocks of the chip, if not detected, it could become a potential escape to manifest into functional test which may impact functional test yield. With the help of 1687 test, it can help to minimize NTF issues by identifying more causes of the failure. It also enables early live failure detection of the silicon tracing back to manufacturing site to modify the ICL and PDL file, allowing failures to be easily correlated and reproduced at different stages of test. In summary, running the 1687 test can help to identify any internal defects in the chips, increase functional test yield, correlate the failures easily to the chip vendor, reduce NTF and RMA. Hence, with the new feature in IEEE 1687, Boundary Scan allows structural testing to take place not just on printed circuit board but also IP blogs of a silicon chip. Oh, I understand it better now. Thank you. No problem.